Make these children excellent plants. Let them grow and develop in the garden of thy covenant and bestow freshness and beauty through the outpourings of the clouds of the Apoc kingdom. O thou kind Lord, I am a little child. Exalt me by admitting me to the kingdom. I am earthly, make me heavenly. I am of the world below, let me belong to the realm above. Gloomy, suffer me to become radiant. Material, make me spiritual, and grant that I may manifest thine infinite bounties. Thou art the powerful, the all-loving, Abdu'l-Baha. In a tablet revealed by Baha'u'llah at this time, he wrote, O my friends that dwell upon the dust, announce unto yourselves the joyful tidings. He who is the best beloved is come. He hath crowned himself with the glory of God's revelation, and hath unlocked to the face of men the doors of his ancient paradise. Let all eyes rejoice and let every ear be gladdened, for now is the fit time to gaze on his beauty. Now is the fit time to hearken to his voice. Proclaim to every longing lover, behold your well-beloved hath come among men. Hear ye mortal birds, in the rose garden of changeless splendor, a flower hath begun to bloom, compared to which every other flower is but a thorn. The flower, thus far hidden from the sight of men, is unveiled to your eyes. In the open radiance of his glory, he standeth before you. His voice summoneth all the holy and sanctified beings to come and be united with him. My object is none other than the betterment of the world and the tranquility of its people, the well-being of mankind, its peace and security, are unattainable unless and until its unity is firmly established. The Garden of Brisbane is, quote, the spot from which he had shed upon the whole of creation the splendors of his name, the All-Merciful, end quote. It is a blessed spot, made so by the events of the twelve days that Baha'u'llah spent there with his friends and family, and the citizens of Baghdad who flocked to see him. They bade him farewell after his ten years sojourn in Baghdad, as an exile initially, but ultimately as an honored guest. They were sad to see him leave, bereft of the thought of his loss from their lives. But that place had been blessed by his presence there, and his impact endures through his revelation, teachings, and transformed lives.
Abdu'l-Baha Abdu speaks of Baha'u'llah as most generous, abundantly giving to the poor. None who came to him were turned away. His doors were open wide, and he always had many guests. This generosity astounded people because he wasn't seeking position or prominence. People were worried that Baha'u'llah would use all his wealth on others. Some would say, why isn't he using this money for his own affairs? Others who were wise said, this personage is connected with another world. There is something sublime within him that is not evident now. The day is coming when it shall be manifested. Abdu'l-Baha said, in truth, the blessed perfection was a refuge for every weak one, a shelter for every fearing one, kind to every indignant one, and lenient and loving to all creatures. Baha'u'llah had an imaginable majesty. He had authority and power. When he was with his companion, Baha'u'llah shared mercy and affection. He inspired everyone. O oh friend, in the garden of thy heart, plant not but the rose of love. and social teachings for today. He taught us that there are only one God and all the religions are from God. Now is the time for us to see our oneness and unite. I've always admired sunflowers who seem to know themselves so well. All they need to do is stare at the sun and they'll be in full bloom. I used to pray day and night for someone who could see through me, peer at my organs as if my skin were made of glass. I prayed for someone with whom I could share everything with, every moment, Every inhale and exhale. I hadn't realized yet that it was you, that someone was you. But now I know that you're my son, that we share the same galaxy, and that you may be far away sometimes, but you always keep me warm. On this last day, when you are about to leave, I'm reminded of the energy that must have surrounded the garden, this Rezvan, brimming with joy as one by one they came to recognize you, as you handed them flowers despite being a beautiful rose yourself on this day in the garden. You announced your position as the sun of all our galaxies. In fact, we knew of a sun from the start, but couldn't pinpoint its coordinates until you arrived. And now it's years later, and I can still smell the roses that hang around your sunshine in this paradise. I'm thankful for these 12 days. I'm thankful they existed and happened. I'm thankful that I now know that every moment is you. You are the sun of our galaxy. You are the one who shares every 
Inhale and exhale with me who keeps me warm and sees through me as though my skin is made of glass, a conservatory housing a sunflower inside my heart that knows nothing other than to stare at you. Every moment is you. And I know that now. The aim of this wronged one in sustaining woes and tribulations, in revealing the holy verses and in demonstrating proofs, hath been naught but to quench the flame of hate and enmity, that the horizon of the hearts of men may be illumined with the light of concord and attain real peace and tranquility. Rezvan, the king of festivals. The year was 1863, and the place was Baghdad. Ten years earlier, the Shah had exiled Baha'u'llah and the Holy Family to Baghdad. The hope was to snuff out the light of the Babi faith, to put it out. Yet the opposite had happened. Wherever Baha'u'llah went, the people would come to see him. From the very poorest of the city to the most powerful and wealthy, people would flock to Baha'u'llah, coming to his house every day to seek his advice, to hear his words, ask for his assistance and help. And with his growing influence, the Shah yet again thought that he must move Baha'u'llah on. And so, an order was given for Baha'u'llah and the Holy Family to be exiled, to leave Baghdad and never come back. Before leaving Baghdad, Baha'u'llah 
rented a garden on the other side of the Tigris River. There were four aisles of palm trees. In these aisles of palm trees, there were roses around. In the middle of the garden, a tent was raised, in which Baha'u'llah and those around him stayed for twelve days. Each day, people would flock to Baha'u'llah, some coming by a boat across the river. Others, on the other side of the river, would come to visit him by foot. People of all walks of life came to see him to bid farewell to one who had brought such joy to him. They came, had tea together, shared words, and shared tears. Every morning, the people would pick the roses in the garden and place them in the tent. It was said that the piles of roses were so high that you couldn't see each other when you were drinking tea. Every night, the whole room roamed the aisles, reciting words of God and writing them down. While he was doing this, nightingales from the trees above would sing their song. During these days, Baha'u'llah told Abdu'l-Baha and four others that he was the manifestation of God, a prophet of God. On the ninth day, the rest of Baha'u'llah's family joined them in the garden. And so these days of sadness and exile turned into joy and excitement. On the twelfth day, they all left the garden and returned to Baghdad. And there, lining the streets, the population came out to bid their farewell to Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah was given a red roan stallion, a beautiful horse. And when he got on the horse, people threw themselves at the feet of the horse, begging Baha'u'llah not to leave. And so it was that as Baha'u'llah left Baghdad, instead of it being a scene of humiliation and shame, he left the city as a king of kings, admired by the thousands that flocked to see him go. And these twelve days are known as Rezvan, the king of festivals. Today. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here too. Oh, by the way, here's the material for thank today. You. And I just want to say, I love how radiant you always are. Oh, thank you so much. When I remembered that I was getting together with you, I just became really happy because you always inspired me. You're too kind. And also, I'm really sorry for being late. No worries at all. It's okay. Hey, you know what I just realized? We practice three key signs of love that we're studying. You know, love is an important principle in all the religions of God. And love has many signs. And some of these that Abdu'l-Baha has emphasized are praise, gratitude, and forgiveness, all of which we just practiced. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how easy it can be. I'm going to try really hard to put them into practice every day. When you overlook others' faults and only see their good qualities, it does become easy, which are another two qualities that we are going to discuss today. You see, you are easily able to forgive me for being late and you are able to overlook those faults, all while continuing to see the good in me. So just to begin with praise, do you want to read this quote from Abdu'l-Baha? Sure. 
Abdul Baha says, One must see in every human being only that which is worthy of praise. When this is done, one can be a friend to the whole human race. If, however, we look at people from the standpoint of their faults, then being a friend to them is a formidable task. One of Baha'u'llah's important teachings is O Son of Spirit, my first counsel is this, was also pure, kindly, and radiant heart. Baha'u'llah teaches us tread near the path of justice, for this verily is the true path. Sanctify my heart from all attachment and gladden my soul with tidings of joy. Free me from attachment to friend and stranger alike and captivate me with thy love that I may become wholly devoted to thee and be filled with fervid rapture that I may desire not but thee seek no one except thyself tread no other path beside thine and commune only with thee that i may even as a nightingale be spell spellbound by thy love and by day and night sigh and wail and and weep and cry out, Ya Baha'u'llah Abba. When Baha'u'llah gave the people a rose, he was showing us how to do this quotation. In the garden of thy heart, plant not but the rose of love. In the garden of Lebanon, Bahala had a tent because the people that didn't want him took away his house and his companion set up the tent for him to live at least somewhere. Suffices all the things above of her, and nothing happens over her, but God suffices. Barely, he is in the heart, and the world the same at all, Nipotin. O Son of Man, I love thy creation, hence I created thee. Wherefore do thou love me, that I may name thy name and fill thy soul with the spirit of life. So 
so powerful, so, so powerful is a lot of unity. So, so powerful, so, so powerful is a lot of unity. That it can. Esa luz de la unidad. 